Hey there. Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to explore one of the most vital tools used in the pharmaceutical industry, the UV spectrophotometer. What is a UV spectrophotometer? It's an analytical instrument that measures the absorbance of ultraviolet light by a sample, typically in the range of 200 to 400 nanometers. In pharmaceutical analysis, it's used to assess the purity and concentration of drugs, ensuring they meet strict quality standards. How UV spectrophotometry works, when a solution containing a drug absorbs ultraviolet light, electrons in the molecules get excited and jump to higher energy levels. The UV spectrophotometer measures the amount of light absorbed. And this data is used to determine the concentration of the substance in the sample, why it's important in pharma. In the pharmaceutical industry, accuracy is everything. Drugs must be formulated precisely, and any deviation can affect their safety and effectiveness. That's where UV spectrophotometry plays a huge role, for example, during the production of tablets or capsules, UV spectrophotometry is used to ensure the concentration of the active pharmaceutical ingredient is within the required range. It's also used in stability testing, helping researchers check if a drug maintains its potency over time. How to use a UV spectrophotometer Operating a UV spectrophotometer is quite straightforward. Here's a quick step-by-step -step guide on how it's done. Prepare your sample by dissolving it in a suitable solvent. Transfer the solution into a cuvette, a small transparent container. Place the cuvette in the UV spectrophotometer's sample holder. Set the wavelength range on the machine based on the type of analysis you're performing. Run the scan, and the machine will produce an absorption spectrum showing how much UV light your sample has absorbed. By comparing the absorbance values with a calibration curve, we can accurately determine the concentration of the sample. UV spectrophotometer calibration, materials needed, certified reference standards, potassium dichromate, for wavelength and absorbance calibration, Holmium oxide filter or solution, for wavelength accuracy, neutral density filters, for stray light testing, cuvettes, quartz cuvettes are recommended for UV range, distilled or deionized water, as a solvent and blank. Spectrophotometer calibration SOP, standard operating procedure, step 1, warm up the UV spectrophotometer, turn on the UV spectrophotometer and allow it to warm up for at least 30 minutes. This ensures the light source stabilizes and provides accurate results. Step 2, Wavelength Accuracy Calibration, to ensure that the spectrophotometer reads the correct wavelength. Use a holmium oxide filter or solution. This reference material has sharp peaks at known wavelengths, 241.1 nm, 287.1 nm, 361.5 nm. Procedure. Place the holmium oxide filter or solution in the sample compartment. Run a wavelength scan across the UV range, typically 200 to 400 nanometers. Compare the wavelengths of the peaks recorded by the spectrophotometer to the certified reference values of holmium oxide. Pass criteria. The measured wavelength should not deviate by more than plus or minus 1 nanometer from the certified reference values. Step 3. Absorbance accuracy calibration. To ensure the instrument reads absorbance values correctly, use potassium dichromate solutions as the reference standard. Prepare three standard solutions of potassium dichromate at different concentrations. Procedure Set the spectrophotometer to specific wavelengths 235 nanometers, 257 nanometers, 313 nanometers, and 350 nanometers. Measure the absorbance of each potassium dichromate solution at these wavelengths. Compare the recorded absorbance values with the certified absorbance values provided with the potassium dichromate standard, pass criteria. The measured absorbance values should fall within the acceptable range specified in the reference material certificate. Step 4. Stray light calibration. To ensure that stray light, light outside the desired wavelength, does not affect the accuracy of measurements. Use a filter or solution, example, potassium chloride for 200 nanometers. Procedure, set the spectrophotometer to a wavelength where the solution or filter is supposed to absorb all light, e. g, potassium chloride at 200 nanometers. Measure the absorbance at this wavelength, pass criteria, 
if the absorbance is higher than 2 others, the stray light is within acceptable limits. If it is lower, the instrument might have stray light issues. Step 5, Baseline Stability and Noise Check To ensure the spectrophotometer can maintain a stable baseline, procedure, run the spectrophotometer without any cuvette in the sample holder, or use a cuvette filled with distilled water as the blank, measure the absorbance at different wavelengths, or record the baseline stability over a specific time period. Pass criteria, the baseline should remain stable with minimal fluctuations. Step 6, Linearity Check. To verify that the instrument provides linear responses over a range of concentrations, procedure, prepare a series of potassium dichromate solutions with known increasing concentrations, measure the absorbance of each solution at a fixed wavelength, plot a graph of absorbance versus concentration, pass criteria, the plot should result in a straight line, indicating a linear relationship. Step 7, Documentation and Certificate, record all the results obtained during calibration, including wavelength accuracy, absorbance accuracy, stray light measurements, and baseline stability. Compare the results to the instrument's calibration criteria outlined in your standard operating procedure or manufacturer's guidelines. If all parameters meet the criteria, generate a calibration certificate stating that the instrument is properly calibrated and ready for use in pharmaceutical. Analysis, step eight, recalibration schedule, Depending on the usage and criticality of measurements, UV spectrophotometers should be recalibrated regularly, typically every six months or before any critical batch analysis. Key advantages of UV spectrophotometry, fast and efficient, it provides rapid results, which is crucial for high-throughput environments like pharmaceutical labs, non-destructive, it doesn't destroy the sample, which is great when you need to perform multiple tests on the same solution, cost-effective, Compared to more complex methods like HPLC or mass spectrometry, UV spectrophotometry is relatively inexpensive, limitations and considerations, however, UV spectrophotometry isn't without its limitations. One drawback is that it can't differentiate between substances with similar absorbance spectra. For this reason, it's often used in combination with other analytical techniques. Like HPLC, to ensure accurate identification and quantification, thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos.